welcome to the Coach Kyle Show. Hello and welcome to another episode um, of the Coach Kayo Show. Uh, you with your host Kayo Day, alongside me, the great Awal Ahmed. Um, for you who are now coming in, um, we want to take this time to welcome you again. Um, thanks for being here. Thanks for taking um, the time out of your schedule to. Um, listen to us. This show is all things soccer. Uh, we speak primarily to the youth and the youth development and everything that facilitate that process. Uh, and tonight we want to be able to speak to a very important topic uh, that oftentimes it affect the development of not just the soccer player, but the person. And we deal with the person first. You know, we hear a lot of times of, you know, the person first, the person first. But we truly believe that it starts with the individual. Mm -hmm. Don't start with the player. So we want to be able to do that if you haven't tell your friends yet. Um, if you haven't um, invite your parents, uh, this is the time to do it, uh, to get an insight. Last week we dealt extensively with the comfort zone. And I hope by now some of you are thinking about how do I uh, get myself out of this comfort zone? How do I really maximize my potential? Uh, but you have to get past something in soccer, and that is conflict. And that's what we'll try to deal with um, in this podcast. Um, feel, feel free to share um, any questions you might have um, on our Facebook. Um, you could share your questions here on, on YouTube also. Um, also, you have all information above. You have all information running below. Um, use it. If you might have a question or you might want clarification in some way or the other. So you want to jump right in? Um, you know, conflict in your development, and we'll try to you know, keep you as short as possible. Um, because, you know, for the past couple of weeks, we there's so much to say and... <laughs> So little time to say it. Nevertheless, what is conflict? And we hear the word conflict um, and what it has to do with, with soccer and youth development. Well, you know, conflict is something that exists it's true. in every, yeah. every aspect of our lives. Um, so it's no different on a soccer field because human beings play soccer. Uh, not animals. So it's a disagreement. It's incompatibility. So we know those two words right there. Uh, you can't put those two words in development, um, or you can't remove those words from development. We cannot. If those words don't exist, then you're in a perfect world. Um, one of the greatest um tragedies that we've seen um, that conflict has the ability uh, to force you to stand still. You know, yeah. when you're faced with conflict, it, it forces you to stand still. Um, it focuses more. That's why we say that we believe it's a big problem when it relates to development because where there's conflict, conflicts, you stand still. And she focuses a lot on limitations rather than possibilities. So conflict 
it's mm. in, in many ways it's a very dangerous thing yeah. because I repeat one it forces you to stand still and it takes away or it limits you rather than focus on your potential and in Utah in America we believe that uh, there's a lot more of Standing still, it's a lot more of encouraging limitations rather than pushing you to your true potential. And we'll try to let you see it from um, this perspective because, you know, obviously with everything you do, there must be an opposition. There's nothing that you can do in life that don't come with an opposition. Opposition will come from anywhere. It don't matter. Opposition is not something that um, we would say. It's, mm -hmm. it's 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 not it's not it don't come from a specific or a certain place. Right. Okay, I switch to that. You know, opposition don't come from <laughs> your enemies. Because really, truly, I want to say, you know, okay. people a lot of times think opposition come from your enemies. You know, when you when you when you talk about conflicts, you talk about opposition. You you will think, you know. This come from your enemies. No, opposition is is part and parcel of your life. It comes with life. As long as you have a life, as long as you have life, life yeah, as long okay. as you're breathing, <laughs> there is an opposition. That opposition could come from the closest person to you. It's not because <laughs> you don't even have to expect it. But you better expect it now because it will come. But we have done a very good job in youth development and youth soccer not to rectify or not to confront this thing, but we go we go we go wrong it or we 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 turn back. You know, talk about turning back and and and, and this conflict that exists. Uh, within the youth developmental yeah, process, I'm gonna add on to what 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 the word conflict means from from the Webster dictionary, and it says typically it's a protracted one, meaning the conflict usually lasts for a longer time more than expected. Mm -hmm. So, like I said, when we add on to to this conflict with the youth soccer, I think there's three three dimensionals we can look at it. Right, the conflict usually from what we see is the the parents, the organization and the process so i believe these three these three um dimensions it's a big part of the conflicts that we see when it when it relates to youth youth soccer right because again the parents want it a certain way right mm -hmm. the organization they usually 99 percent going to go with what the parents <laughs> what the parents say because they're the biggest stakeholders and then we forget the process which it should be the only <laughs> the only thing that we should be focused on we Forget about that. So that's where the comp there's a whole that whole dimension right there is the is conflict every single day when it comes to youth football. Every day. And that gets into the way of development. Um, <laughs> that process itself. You talk about the parents, you talk about the organization, you talk about um the, the coaches for the trainers, it it limits. Mm -hmm. It limits the ability uh, to focus on potential. Yes. It keeps you yes. where you are. Once you're once you're standing still, then this how you, you how can you use mm -hmm. the word development? Mm -hmm. Development it's a process. This is why there's ages and stages within the developmental pathway because you you it's like you're climbing a step and where you start the idea is to get to your desired outcome and more so at every step there's different challenges that you're confronted with yes but the step before it's an orientation or it should be an orientation to what you're going to do next so development 
don't keep you in a comfort zone. It provides mm-hmm. conflict. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> so it's like conflict <laughs> is a part of development, but it's not a part of development within the youth soccer process here mm. in America. Okay, conflict mean. separates mm. people in in the in soccer development. Okay. So development can never happen because nobody wants to confront the conflict. <laughs> the truth. See what I'm saying? Yeah. So if you refuse to confront conflict, then you can't speak to development. If there's no conflict, there's no development. Yes. Okay. Because you have to come out of your comfort zone to develop. You have to. Because to be in a comfort zone is to stay with habits that you've practiced for a long time. Okay. And if you've done something all your life and you you believe there's nothing else, you will keep doing it. Yeah. Anything else is conflict. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So then how do you move to development or how do you progress? If you don't move out of your comfort zone, conflict will do that to you. (laughs) Mm. So the danger, you know, this, this conflict that presents itself within the game is not just stopping the player. And this is what we try to do as much in this show, because our goal and our purpose is to speak to the humanistic part of soccer development, Mm. not to speak to the player. It's more to speak to the human being because we understand it's the person that plays the game. And if you don't develop as a person, then you, how are you going to develop as a player? It's not two different people. It's the same person, right? So it's more important for the person, you, me, to be self-aware, to be conscious of what is going on with us so that we can have a better better attitude or a better behavior to the process of development. This conflict that exists... This lack of adaptability, this constant disagreement with what needs to happen and what is not happening and what should happen and we should have fun and we we should have the right amount of playing time and this constant, every game, every game, this conflict, this disagreement, it's not just affecting the development of the player, but more importantly is developing it is affecting the development of a person, Mm. the person's mentality. You know, people don't connect the two. And why why do they struggle so hard to connect the two? Is it that they don't value soccer? But they value school? (laughs) You want the truth? Yeah. That's what we do on this show. Yeah. Yeah. Is it they don't value? Uh, soccer for for ninety percent of Americans is just a sport, Kyle. It's just, it's just an extracurricular activity, to be honest. They value school. School is it's if you if you want to talk about the American ideology or again the American way of thinking, it's school. You know, if you have a nice if you go to school, you do well in school. You go to college, you should have a good life. So the main focus is for for everybody to go to school, do well, and you should have a good life after that. You might be right. There's, I don't think. They truly value <laughs> soccer as part of um, the holistic like, development. Yeah. yeah, you know, people say it and they just, you know, they just float by it. Sounds good too when uh, you say it, <laughs> because it, 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 it begs the question, right? Uh, there's so much conflict when it comes to practice and practice times and hey, the hours, yeah. and <laughs> you know, you, go. you, you spend you spend 15 minutes <laughs> talking to the kids, yeah. <laughs> It's all of that, right? But we practice for 90 minutes, right? And to, you know, to go extra 15 minutes or even 30 minutes 
let's go to two hours. Okay. You know, two hours. There's so much complaint. There's so much. <laughs> you want so much, uh, you, you know, want, <laughs> like there's so much problem, right? But you go to school for eight hours. Mm. Go to school for eight hours. And in some cases, there's tutoring after. Yeah. Nobody complains. Because they believe the value within school helps the child, not just from an educational mm -hmm. standpoint, yes, but they firmly believe, right, that it helps them from a psychological standpoint. Yes, yes. It helps them with their holistic life. 100%. It comes to soccer, though. It's just kicking a ball. This is why they don't even value the trainers, they're babysitters. Literally. I pay you to keep my child for an hour and a half because I need to go to the grocery. Or I just need my child to be active or doing something. Mm -hmm. Like if, like mm -hmm. if this, <laughs> yeah. like what you're doing has no value. Uh, but guess yeah. what? I don't blame them because okay. you trainers and you coaches and you clubs have created this. So now you're devalued, but you play such a major role such as a coach. A, such a great When you coach, use right? the word coach, yeah. we understand in, in podcasts before, if you didn't have a chance, go back and, and listen uh, to our podcast. A coach is so important for today's generation. Hey. <laughs> if you understand the true definition of a coach, mm -hmm. you will not take this for granted, but I can't blame you parents for taking it for granted because you don't see no value but your child having activities. Mm -hmm. And you don't recognize that your child is continuously confronted with conflicts that could e that can easily put them back into their comfort zone. Oh my God. Which stops the level of growth from a holistic standpoint. While you think that I'm a daycare center or or I'm a I'm a babysitter or I have no value. You know, that's okay for you to think. But if you truly value yourself and the ability that has been given to you to bring the awareness, to bring the consciousness, mm -hmm. to help this young person, to help this, this individual to self-identify. You will know that the time spent with a coach on a field is dangerous. Because like repetition, everything is dangerous. Most players, most players that play this game have a genuine love for the game. You know, they have an idea of where they want to be. Regardless if the child come and, and they... You know, we make fun of the shin guys being out their socks and <laughs> they come with a football, American football <laughs> shoes, or they come with a beach pants. There's an idea there. Yeah. <laughs> it's an idea. There's there's a dream. There's there's something they yeah. want to achieve. Right? They're not just coming aimless. And all these things are working through their five senses, senses, how they feel, you know, they, what they taste in. But, you know, it, all of these things, these five senses are working and it's giving them an idea of why they're there. You know, we've had kids come to us. We know they're not there for soccer. But there was a bigger picture there. They were struggling with something. They were struggling with their, with their self-identity. They were struggling with the, with who they are, what they look like. They felt depressed. You know, from a soccer perspective, you know, people were like, you know, that's a waste of time. But we in, we in the business of development. Yeah, yeah, that's what we do. We're not in the business of superstardom. <laughs> we're in the business of development. And if you're not a five-star club, you're more so. You're in the business of developing young people. Yeah. You're not in the business of, of, of having a winning program. So you must be able to identify if this is about soccer or if it's wow. more, if it's more, because this kid is faced with a conflict. 
And that's just the player who can't, who don't look like the football <laughs> player or who don't represent yeah. soccer. But this, this is something that is happening across the board because, like we said, there's no development without conflict, right? We're going somewhere. But most kids, even though they have an idea, most of them don't have a goal. They don't even know what it looks like. Okay. We had that discussion with a yes. group of kids. Yes. They went back yes. about 10 times <laughs> trying to figure <laughs> out what a goal is. What a goal is. Imagine <laughs> that. <laughs> but we'll deal with that subject. We're talking about goal setting. <laughs> but we know kids come with an idea. Mm -hmm. And they, these five senses are working. And these five senses play a major role in how I identify with myself. My awareness. My consciousness. But I, but I know there's one thing. We talked about it last week. There's a comfort. Wherever we are, there's a comfort there. But I want to give us something to think about. But I'll do it when we come back from this short break. Stay tuned. Coyote, McKinnon and company are ready to dress you in one of their most stylish, comfortable and attractive athletic gears this fall for you to achieve that desired athletic goal. Check out their online store today for your joggers, tank tops, bras, backpacks, sweatshirts and everything else you'll need to complete that look. It's Coyote, McKinnon and company. We care. Welcome back to the Coach Kyle Show. You're with Coyote and alongside me, the great Owala Med. We'll spend the next 20 minutes trying to unpack this thing. And hopefully you stay around to uh, fully understand, um, especially you young players. And if there's if they have parents here who are watching, um, it's very under, it's very important for you to understand this so that um, that you don't always run uh, from conflict <laughs> because there's a conflict that exists. But because we, we lack understanding or the conflict is not rewarding what it should be rewarding, you know, no development is happening. Not just from a, 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 a soccer standpoint, but more importantly, from a human development standpoint so you want to add anything <laughs> it's a lot it's a, it's a lot man i want you to i want you to start and then i'm gonna I'm I'm finish off you i want you to yes, start because i want to be able to try to to rectify um this situation okay where um see this idea Right, because we said okay. everybody starts with an idea. Okay, they have a desire, right? Mm -hmm. They have a desire, and this desire is positive. So let's look at the the why. Okay, let's look at the why. Why as the positive? Like this is a desire um, that I have that lives within me. Okay. Okay, and then on the other hand, with this desire I have, we'll use X. We'll use X as doubts and fears. Okay. Right. So, with the desire within us, and the fears and the doubts that we are confronted with, it creates this uncomfortableness. Of course. Which is conflict. Yeah, of course. So on one hand, the child, player, 
They have this desire within them. They, they want something. They want to play. But then there's this external thing. <laughs> All these external uh, variables that produces this X factor, which we use as doubts and fear. So why desire within? Yeah. X, doubts and fears. fears and doubts. Okay. Doubts and fears. But when you put those two things together, when you put your when you have your desire within and you 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 add it with fears and doubts, you become very uncomfortable. And that's a conflict. Because there's, okay. a, there's a disagreement there. There's a disagreement between what you're feeling within and what you're seeing on mm -hmm. the outside. Okay. That's true. You, you understand yeah, what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah. Okay, I see, what you, I see where you're going. I see where you're going. So okay. conflict is not something none of us, none of us can ex <laughs> escape. Because they always, they will always be an external thing. And that external thing could be family, friend, loved one, whatever it is. Once you have a desire within you to do something, oftentimes yeah, conflict. You're right. You're right. there's something that exists in outside of it that brings you to the point of either you're doubting what you're doing, what you should be doing. There's a fear that you might not <laughs> accomplish it. There's a fear that you're not good enough because you haven't seen it. It's not in your hands. So you get really uncomfortable, right? But uncomfortable people in most cases, if not always, always have this sense of anxiety. They panic. Yeah. What happens when you panic? I don't know do it. You freeze. <laughs> you freeze. I'm not gonna try. I'm not gonna do it. I'm gonna run. It's one or the other. It's one or the other. So the moment a child gets to a place of conflict, we just explain the why and the X factor, right? How much times you hear parents say, even in our program, we had players where parents say, "This is just too much pressure." <clears throat> How many times you hear? You you be count or you really come hear? come. <laughs> so in my head, I got about fifteen. Man, in my head, I got fifteen right 15. now. Fifteen. <laughs> Imagine that, right? Just around us, Jeez. parents constantly use the word too much, too pressure. much pressure. Yeah. Now listen, if you haven't tell your friends yet, mm -hmm. and if you are a youth soccer player and wondering why you just playing for fun, you're in a comfort zone. And it's not you. It's not that you don't have a desire within. Mm -hmm. You 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 don't know what to do. You don't know what to do with the fears and the doubts that you're confronted with. So guess what you call it? You call it pressure. No. <laughs> it's really the first time. What your parents are actually saying, because most times are you parents. Most times. Is the parents, not the not the players. Mm. The pay, the players, it's not there's too much pressure. What the problem is, or all is the first time this person <laughs> is the first time the desire that they have within is confronted. Mm. Mm. See what I'm telling you. We talk about comfort zone last week. And, and and if you get a chance, it's important to go back and listen to it. It's not the pressure. Okay. It's not the pressure. Because obviously, if they're feeling the pressure, what is happening is what they have done, something that they're doing now is not in harmony with the image they have in their head. Okay. So this is the first time this desire that they have within them 
is being confronted. And what happens when it what happens when it is confronted? <laughs> Um, it's not really what we want. That is the doubt. <laughs> yeah, man. That is the fear. <laughs> and they ask to leave. Why they ask to leave? Because they want to go back into the comfort zone, even if it minimizes their potential. Problem. That's scary. Remember now, comfort zone. It's a behavior that aligns itself with what you've always done. It has no place with potential. <laughs> Comfort zone has no place with potential. So sometimes you Sometimes you hear parents like say, how many times you hear this, right? This child got so much potential, but I just don't know. Why? Why? <laughs> why? why he's why he's not why he's not pushing on? Like, why is she not why why is she get in her own way of her potential? I'm explaining to you, your child will never develop, would never maximize what they're able to do. Because every time they every time that desire which to be a successful person at life, you've got to be able to have confrontation with the external force. Okay. So what about the athlete? Mm -hmm. So what about the athlete is willing to deal with that confrontation, but back at home? Because we know home is different than when we're around a certain environment. Mm -hmm. The child is willing to say, you know what? I want to take this conversation on. I want to do it. I want to push myself. But at home, it might be, eh, you know, you know, you should look at other things. You know, I see that you really want to do this, but you know, look for plan B just in case it don't work out. That's another, that's a that's a major because I'm yeah. with you all the time at home. Yes. If I'm hearing that every single day, mm -hmm. and then I, I'm only around a certain environment for maybe two hours or maybe six hours throughout the week. Yes. It's I'm, that's that's very scary for me as a child. I, yeah. I don't know who to listen to. I'm, of course, I'm probably most likely going to listen to my my parents, but then back out here, I'm like, this is really what I want to do. What do I do now? They're paying the bills. <laughs> <laughs> if you don't want to be in the cold, <laughs> yeah. you, you will listen to but, your parents. But that's a very scary <laughs> confrontation thing. But that's a conflict. That is a, this is why I'm saying, right, <laughs> that nobody wants to the conflict that exists, they don't want to confront it. Which, on the flip side, that conflict stops development. Okay. You see, this makes people really, I believe it makes people uncomfortable. Yes. Because what are you talking about? Yes, because I'm a coach. I'm a coach. That means my purpose in life is to raise the consciousness and the awareness of the person, their consciousness and their awareness, but about who they are, not what they're doing. What you're doing is not necessarily who you are. You're doing what you're doing because you have not all you have not figured out yet who you really are. And it's my duty to facilitate that process to move you from where you are, that is your comfort zone, to your true potential. Because as long as you live in, you haven't done what you, what you need to do. Because if your assignment, if your assignment is <laughs> done, what are you living for? Right? And if you're taking your own life, it's a problem. And if you take, if you're taking your own life, is because you haven't identified with what you, with your purpose and what you should be doing. It's a real conversation, man. This is this people don't want to hear this. It's true. 
You see, the problem is all in most youth soccer programs, they are not allowing the person, the athlete, to reach what I call the horror barrier. Okay. You see, the desire within, <laughs> I'm telling you now, no development is not happening. I don't care what none of you say. No development. There's too many players running from one team to the next team to the next team to the next team. To the next team. There's too many. There's too much focus on everything else except where will my child be in the next five, six years. These programs are not allowing this to happen. What is the horror barrier? Is the desire within meeting the uncomfortableness of life? That's fear and doubts. That is letting them <laughs> come into contact with the unknown. You say, well, what are you talking about? What am I talking about? You went to clubs. <laughs> Give them a good experience. Yeah. <laughs> you know, make sure the players are comfortable. Yeah, Make sure thing. they are happy. That's a big thing. See the words they yeah, use? Yeah, yeah. Are those words that challenges potential? Mm -mm. Or those words are words that keep you in alignment with your habits you came in with? Well, I got to say that again. Yeah, no, that's, 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 that's I got to say that again. <laughs> the words they are using... To you, parents, and to you, kids, directors and technical directors and owners, be quick to come to tell the coach, listen, make sure that these kids are comfortable, they're happy, that they want to come back, and, and all of these things, right? How many times did you go to club and they say, listen, I want you to challenge these kids' ability to reach their highest potential. Because guess what? We want greater people. Because to do that, your, your numbers have to be very small. <laughs> so, yeah, no, let me take a break. Let me take a break. Let me no. step back. Yeah, no, I've been to, like I said, I've been to, to been numerous clubs. And even you were with me at a, at a particular club. And we reached a certain level with these kids. Mm -hmm. And... I remember, I remember I got an email and I think he was laughing at the email because me and you talked and the director was saying, Hey, you know, you, you're doing too much. You're doing too much running. You know, these kids, <laughs> you're doing too much. Let's, you know, just relax a little bit, you know, just you, you take it easy. It's, it's, it's too much for them at this aggressive. moment. It's too, <laughs> no. it's, too aggressive. it's too aggressive. Just break it down a little bit. And we had a conversation like, what, what, what are we doing here then? It, it, it goes back to exactly what you say. If these kids are coming to a certain uh, a start point, mm -hmm. literally 99% of these clubs, because that's what the model is, to make sure they're having a good time, make sure we keep them, is keeping them literally at where they started. They're not, they're not going nowhere. Yes. Yes. <laughs> You're correct. You're right. You're right. It's, it's, that's why we, we could confidently say here, <laughs> confidently, <laughs> There's no development happening because no. there's no development in comfort. That you can't wrap that again. <laughs> yeah. You guys, you guys, you guys <laughs> believe that right? when we we came here to talk about conflict, we you think we came here to talk about the coach cussing the mother yeah. and the mother cussing cussing the coach <laughs> no. and the players no. disrespect. No, you no. thought we were coming with that. No, no we're no. not. <laughs> no, we're not. We're talking about conflict that exists that you don't want to exist which is a part of the developmental process that you refuse to confront and you run your kids and you say no but they're too serious yeah. this is why you don't even value I, I wonder sometimes you say you care about your kids but you don't value them confronting something that they will have to confront sometime in their lives that's the truth. You don't want it to happen now because you are the external force that feel like you are the protector. Like you are the protector of conflicts. 
There's no development in your life from even a child. You will bust your mouth a couple times before you recognize you need to balance <laughs> yourself when you're running. Yeah, in fact, hit your head on a door. <laughs> you will bust your mouth if you don't recognize that you need to put your hands down when you're falling off the yeah. chair. You, this, yeah, you Paul, know, you're, what right, a, you're right. Are, 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 we, <laughs> no. are we crazy? <laughs> no. And, you know, you speak, you, you made mention of something with a coach telling you about being aggressive. One of the things about our culture, about our people, about where we came from, we, we were always uncomfortable. Always. <laughs> oh, slavery man. is uncomfortable Extreme. you in chains you are being whipped it's to do work that you don't even want to do, do all day it's a culture thing it, yo. it's a culture thing <laughs> if we limit our own self as people we limit our own selves as people with our own development because we understand what it is to be uncomfortable. Oh, it's a fact. So we have become very comfortable making people uncomfortable. That's so, that's so crazy. Because that, like that is the process <laughs> uh, to getting out of where you are. Yo, yo this is a trap <laughs> that sabotages potential. Mm refusing to confront conflict is a trap it's a trap that sabotages potential that means you would never reach your potential and guess what some people are comfortable there and the people who we're talking to is the one who crying in bed who closing up who lock their doors and they depress those are the people we're talking to. We're not talking to the ones who are comfortable in, with what they're doing. <laughs> we're talking with the ones who's struggling with their self work, you know, with their self awareness, with their identity. The ones who, every time there's a conflict, we need to move from this program, you know. But you know, the crazy thing is, yeah. is the one that you don't expect either, though. It's the ones that look like they're happy and they're they're okay. Those are the ones that are really struggling, though. Because more, nobody cares. <laughs> because guess what? Like I said, everybody's there to give a good experience, to make mm -hmm. you feel comfortable. And what they, what, they, what, what they don't understand as coaches and as trainers and as organization, the child came in with a certain habit and they have aligned themselves with that habit that, is, that, that might not be necessarily important to their growth. So you are actually, you are actually, sir, parents, you are mm -hmm. actually telling your child that their behavior now is perfect. Yeah. You're forgetting <laughs> yeah. that this child needs to turn 16. You're forgetting that maturation is something that is, is, is fluid, is happening all the time. And there's a responsibility that is happening now that will be responsible for what happens tomorrow. But you took your child away from that. Yeah. And these, these organizations, these programs have set a trap. They've set a trap for you. Because by doing that, by keeping your child in this comfort, by not challenging them in all aspects of their life to bring out their awareness, to raise their consciousness, to draw their potential, you have sabotaged your own child's development and your own child's potential to be great. Yet you use the word, like, I love my child. <laughs> then we must beg the question, what is love? You know? <laughs> because... The only thing you have succumbed to is the external view of what is happening yeah. presently. So there's no development. Oh, because you could score a goal? Because you could dribble? <laughs> no, much kids who are dribbling are killing themselves? It's a fact. It's a 
a fact. I know one kid, I saw him at high school, he could dribble, he was fantastic. He, oh my gosh, his his feet. I was like, this, this boy gonna go all the way. Come to realize at 20 years old, the boy's an alcoholic, get kicked out of college, everything. Because yes, all he was focusing on is him being comfortable and because he could dribble and he could pass. Yeah. Oh, let him do what he wants. Yeah, yeah let him enjoy life. Yeah. Let Oh, you know, if I if I rough him up, you know, you kids come it. with different... Yes, yeah. they come to you with their problems, yeah. sir. And because you are afraid to challenge. You're afraid to let this child see themselves for who they really are because they might leave because <laughs> they will leave this is what all the parents do yeah the moment something's not convenient to them That's or it don't fit them or it, yeah. it, it makes them uncomfortable guess what they do they run with the kids so it tells me something about you you've always been comfortable in your life That's a fact. so you don't know what it means so now you get your child running but they're right here looking to say, oh, you know what? I think I make an error. Yeah, you see. Yeah. I, I really how miss times, it. How many times? I really miss it. Uh, but the parents so 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 set in their ways, like, who dare you? You think I'm gonna you gonna make me do this and make me do that? Nobody's not making I we we not that important. <laughs> we, remember, we don't we're not done there. <laughs> but like we promise you, we're gonna end the show directly at night. So we'll take this short break and we'll come and we'll bring the curtains down. Stay tuned. Don't go nowhere. Improvement is a process, not a quick fix. This December, come to KMSA Winter Supplemental, where you can learn all the principles of the four moments of the game. Welcome back to the Coach Kayo Show. You with Kayo Day, alongside me, the great Owala Med. You see, we're very passionate about this thing. <clears throat> Forgive me. Because you must do this with purpose. Your job is not, your job is not to get numbers. <laughs> So many people are going to be disagree with you. Well, development is not a crowd. <laughs> development is not a crowd. Oh, man. It's not. Oh, man. You know, people talk about it's established mm -hmm. because they see numbers. Like, yeah. that's not development. You know, James Allen said something in his book. And if, like I said, if you get a chance to read as a man, think it. And if you get a chance to read it with your child, you know, it should be a, a night where you just sit down and you, you read this book. It's a powerful book. James Allen said, you will become small as your controlling desire or great as your dominant aspiration. Let me repeat that because I felt some of you miss it. Yeah. <laughs> James Allen, in his book, As a Man Thinker, he said, You will become small as your controlling desire, your comfort zone, your will, unwillingness to confront conflicts. And conflicts are fears and doubts. It challenges the very desire you have within to be successful. You say you will be as small as that. Or great as your dominant aspirations. You're talking about potential there. It's not what you can see. We talk about faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. You see, I don't worry with people. You know, when I figure out that that life is not about nothing and no one else, life is about why you here. You know, and sometimes the creator use you to 
bring other people here mm -hmm. so that the work will continue. It's, it's, it's not to validate you as no, nothing special. Sure. It's to continue to work. It's part of the process. So for me, it don't matter who you are. It don't matter what relationship you think I have with you. You know, what matters is why I am here and what I need to do with the time and the season that has been given to me. There's an appointment. There's an appointed time. And guess what? There's an external force that will constantly challenge that, that brings conflict. And sometimes you have to run over that conflict. Sometimes you don't even have to see it. It don't even exist. When I say you don't see it, it don't mean that you don't challenge it, but you don't even give it your time because you have to keep marching forward. Because like most kids, like most parents, it makes them stand still. It makes them turn back. It makes them run away. It makes them run to the other side of the fence because they don't want to deal with it. Your development is not happening in soccer, regardless <laughs> of what, what, how many trophies you want, how many goals you score, how many accolades you have, your ability to dribble and pass. And... Because the National Institute of Mental Health said that the second the second highest rate of death, suicidal death, is between the age of 10 to 34. Mm -hmm. Ironically, when you talk about development from zone one, <laughs> it's within that age. Hey. And when you talk about development as a coach, you're talking from 6, 7 to 35. Second highest rate. Second highest suicidal rate. It's between that age. But yeah, you know yeah, what? Yeah. You know, we just go for activities, you know, we just, you know, we just play for fun and you know. Two kids in the last two weeks. Yeah, we saw that. Took took their own lives. They're soccer players. Hey. Young men. Young men. Good too. <laughs> yeah, good, because good. yeah, you, you don't you don't value this. You don't you don't value sports. And I don't blame you, parents, you know. I don't blame you. Because oftentimes you, you just put in your child in there for because everybody says it's just activities, activities just yeah. go have fun. fun, you know, go win a couple games and put it on Instagram and and and, and put up video and, and and talk about training and, and how good passing and, and 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 all of these things, all of these things. But we in a society where kids are killing themselves. Yeah. We're in a society where there's bullying. You send your child out to your house to go to school to learn. And your child come back home and go in a room and hang themselves. And then a month after you you get to, to understand that your child was being bullied, bullied in school. Mm -hmm. I say, oh, we can't stop it. What? How many kids playing soccer? I mean, some of those kids who in school are the ones bullying kids in the school. Because we're not teaching them about, about their lives, about overcoming. Hmm. It's not about soccer. Uh, we don't really want to play soccer. We're just there for fun. No. Whatever you put yourself into, it's affecting your life. Mm -hmm. It's affecting your development. It's affecting who you will be. Like you can't grasp that. Sorry. But you're not going to say you didn't hear it, right? <laughs> you, have to, you have to eradicate this, this horror barrier. We must find programs that challenges and create harmony between your desire within And the image 
that you see that you see for yourself which will burst through <laughs> conflicts which will burst through fear and doubt and if your coaches and your programs not challenging you in that area to be uncomfortable to learn to be comfortable being uncomfortable I'm telling you, I'm telling you, kids, you are lost. You're lost. And your parents that encourage that level of comfort to your child, you're not doing nothing good for them. You're not doing nothing good for them. Development is about self-awareness. Development is about self-consciousness. Development is knowing that the answer lies in you. It's not by an external force. That external force is supposed to facilitate that process. The emotion should not be a part of that process. Energy and motion. Your parents get all emotional and they're quick to be like, oh, he, you know, he, you know, he's roughing you up. He, you know, he, he's making you feel so uncomfortable. You got to go. got to go. Oh, this coach is very nice. This, you know, he smiles and he jokes. Because their emotion, their energy in motion is driving you away from the thing you will have to face at 16. It will, it will, you will have to face it at 20. You will have to face it at 42. My God, you will have to face it at 50. How many 50-year-old men and women, 40-year-old, 30-year-old, 35-year-old, struggling with their self-identity? They're struggling with who they are. They have to make a thousand mistakes. They have to go through a thousand pains. They have to go through a million hurts. They have to go through alcohol. They have to go through drug abuse. They have to go through all of these things. Sometimes before they find themselves, and some don't even make it out. Make it, yeah, I was about to say, you lucky you just don't make it. Because yeah. you have made them feel so comfortable. You make them feel like you are the great protector. You're there to guide the child through the process. You're there to make them feel it's okay. And it's uncomfortable. It's okay. It's okay to be uncomfortable. What is that uncomfortableness? Is it challenging you within? Or is it challenging you outside? And if that challenge is outside, maybe it's abuse. Maybe it is. But if it challenges you within... To believe that there's a higher, there's a higher, there's a higher level, there's a higher promise, there's a higher place that you can go, there's a potential that is waiting on you to grab it and go, then you must stay the course. I fall in love with being uncomfortable to the point where I embrace hatred, I embrace dislike. I embrace your definition of who I am. I embrace all of that. I embrace being worthless to some people. I embrace everything. I embrace being illiterate to many people. I embrace those are conflicts. <laughs> those are things that will drive doubt and fear, yeah. even in my mind at this age. I embrace that I'm black. And I might not have the skill set to be a leader from your perspective. I embrace that. I embrace that you believe that I don't have the ability to lead, to bring you out from where you are to where you need to be. Need to be. Yeah. To raise your awareness and your consciousness. I embrace it. Because guess what? It's conflict. But it can't stop me. Because potential is limitless. Embrace conflict. Embrace conflict. <laughs> Tell them. Tell them. <laughs>
<laughs> when you say embrace conflict, <laughs> make sure you define what that means. Because some of these people who are like, yo, they won't fight every day. You have a desire <laughs> within. Yes. And fear and doubt will challenge you. Okay. And it's important that the people you associate yourself with let you understand it's just on comfort that will become comfort. Okay. Stay blessed. Be encouraged. Hope to see you back here next Monday. Our information is below. Reach out to us. If you need any help, if you need any direction, if you need any encouragement, if you need your awareness and your consciousness to be raised, even if you want to challenge us and what we're saying, we welcome it because we are part of the growth mindset crew, not the fixed mindset crew. So enjoy the rest of your week. We look forward to seeing you again on the Coach Kaya Show next Monday. So if the ball is here and if they're here, then when we bring in our secondary players, we see there's gaps in the field. So they must take that away, which gives us this, which gives us this, which gives us this. Support, good support in anglers. But we're talking about transition. What happens when the ball is lost? The ball is lost, but he's backwards of the ball. He is tight now, and he comes over. It's now a 3v2 situation, and we're so compact, even if the ball go here, the six is there to give coverage, the player can recover. Now we're keeping the ball in front, is allow the seven to recover. A wide variety of episodes are already available, chock full of incredible insight from two qualified experienced coaches. Here are some previews of eye-opening quotes. Lots of players think they need to drive an hour or two hours to get good training. Because community clubs do not feel, most of them, if not all of them, don't feel the responsibility to provide every child the best opportunity. This is for players to have fun. So why not name it rec? An elite league shouldn't be based on teams. It should be based on the coaching. There's no integrity in the game. It's all about business. It's it, That's all it is. There's nothing about soccer first. Everything is about giving the athletes an experience. We hope you are available to tune in. New episodes every Monday night.